Welcome back to Windows Wednesday here on Switch to Linux, where we talk about why I switch to Linux and privacy functions and other things circumstantial to not any longer using the Windows platform. Not that I think that the Windows platform is so absolutely horrible that nobody should ever use it. It's not for me for reasons that I've explained in many times on this channel, namely very privacy invasive. It wants to control your system. It wants to upsell you everything it wants to do. There's, I want my operating system to be transparent to allow me to do the things that I'm actively doing as I am getting work done. So with that, we're going to talk about Windows is ready for the big anticipated upgrade. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you've not already done so, leave us a like and a comment down below to help with the algorithm. And today we are going to talk about a few different articles related to various Windows updates and things like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive on in uh, to talk about first the deep frustration, secondly what is coming on down the line, and then third a major upgrade to the recall, which is in my opinion a step in the right direction with recall and so let's go ahead and chat about that so first up there was an update last week that came through as an optional update that if you've not already updated this do not upload this um, or do not upgrade this uh, optional upgrade. This is supposed to be a quality of life, which gave us the quality of life of a, um, um, well, if you don't want your computer to function properly, it will uh, definitely decrease your quality of life on your outside everything because it caused constant system reboots that bit locker recovery and other random system crashes quite frequently. We're talking about KB5043145. So this is an optional update. So if you have your computer set to just do the major updates, you probably will not see this one. If you're doing all updates, keep an eye out for this one. Do not install it. While there are certainly some people that are not having issues, for many people, it is causing constant reboots, rebooting into recovery mode, and even those bit locker woes. I will remind you once again, if you've not already gone into there, Windows has started encrypting people's drives. In many cases, people do not even know their drive is encrypted. Now, it's not that everybody will have their drive automatically encrypted by an update. Usually what would happen is you're restalling your PC, you've purchased a new one, and as of, I think, a year, year and a half ago, if you re, uh, redo your computer through a system restore point, it's going to enable this by default. <clears throat> The idea is to provide more protection for your computer as it's sitting there at rest. And so if somebody comes in, breaks into your house, steals your computer, or if you leave your computer at a coffee shop and someone swipes it and it's turned off, the they will not be able to get the data easily. And that is a good thing. I encrypt all the drives in my van here because I am in a mobile hot house. I have a greater chance of getting robbed. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but if somebody does... Almost every device I have is encrypted it with the, you know, Lux encryption at rest encryption so that if I am, if I lose a computer or something, there's no data that can be easily extracted from my device. I mean, a state actor could, a law enforcement could probably figure it out, but your average criminal is going to be like, well, I don't know. The best they're going to do is format the drive and reinstall Windows, therefore making my devices worse and then, you know, sell on some black market or something. Uh, but, you know. In this case here, um, what Windows is did with encrypting people's drives is if you are unaware of that, you probably do not have access to the decryption key. Your TPM module on your computer handles this. And as long as everything is working fine, this works great. But if you come into a case like this update can do where you get into the BitLocker recovery mode, if you do not have that pass key, you are not going to be able to be able to reset your system. Now, the good news is you can still get that key from your Microsoft account. Of course, that's bad news because Microsoft now has access to your files um, on your encrypted computer, which is in and of itself another dystopian future thing of some 
warrant comes through because you went jogging by a bank that was subsequently robbed and they have no other leads. So they do a geofence warrant and they say, hey, what's on this device? And they seize your computers. They don't have to ask your permission to unlock the computer because Microsoft has access to the keys. This is why this is a fundamentally bad idea. You should encrypt your drives with a way that you know how to encrypt it. You should not be storing those keys onto a service that has access to those keys. Now, that being said, um, go into your system settings and either turn that off or have access to the keys. And if possible, delete them from your Microsoft account. Just have access to them yourself. Uh, these are, of course, good OPSEC things to do. But looking briefly at this update, uh, this is supposed to bring quality of life improvements. Turned out to be several unexpected bugs. They've acknowledged the known issues. Uh, some people are getting, let's see, some devices... Um, boot into Windows automatic repair tool after multiple restarts. BitLocker recovery can pop up in some cases, requiring you to have that key we've been talking about. And um, it's only available, let's see, Windows, uh, let's see, BitLocker is a Windows security tool. Okay, never mind. They, they don't have this. Uh, they don't have this correct. BitLocker was rolled out to everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Basically, people got into boot loops, you got into recovery mode, you got into boot BitLocker recovery, and then you started having numerous other issues. And as of right now, we still don't know exactly what the solution is or if you have a way, basically, if you can get into safe mode or some other way, remove that update. You should block list that update. Make sure it doesn't happen. That's KB5043145. Uh, don't upgrade that thing. This is just yet another upgrade in the Windows 11 cycle that is just causing more devastation. It makes me wonder, have they tested these things on computers or not? I don't even know half the time, you know. So um, with that, we're going to have a look at the, uh, of course, that was last week. This week, we are starting to get the rollout of the major um, the major uh, 24H2. This is the one that's rolling out the recall application, several other things. There are some people said this is going to be Windows 12. Uh, as of right now, it's still branding everything as Windows 11 24H2. And so this is not rolling up to Windows 12 at this point in time. However, there are a ton of underlying changes inside of the system, which makes this a radical change. There are a number of good functions. Uh, Finally, uh, Linux uh, Linux keeps on lending its uh, its functions to Windows. So one of the things that Windows built in this time is the sudo command. You used to have to do a PowerShell uh, in order to gain administrative terminal rights, or if you just do the basic command line, you could only do things related to your user. Well, this version does add the sudo command. So inside of a regular command line, you can use the sudo commands to do elevated privileges with your administrative password. So that's actually really good. Uh, same thing we have on a lot of Linux systems here. We can manage our systems through the terminal with the sudo applications. Of course, there's are certainly some downsides to this. One of the things we see in um, in Linux systems right now is system D is starting to depreciate the sudo command in favor, is it the run, run zero command, I think it's called, uh, which effectively does the exact same thing, although some people said that's less secure than sudo. Please keep sudo. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. That's on a Linux video down the road. <clears throat> so we have File Explorer and Quick uh, Settings Boost Quality End of Life. So we have Wi-Fi 7 support. Users can use QR codes to share Wi-Fi networks. Uh, I think uh, Android has at least been able to do that. Probably Apple has been able to do that for a while. I know I've seen that on my Graphene OS before. So you can use a QR code to share your Wi-Fi networks. That's actually um, welcome, uh, welcome to the century, I guess. And let's see, additional supports. There's just a number of things you can flip through this. I'll leave this particular article down below as it has a lot of the functions. We do have the new energy saver mode. We talked about that. We did show some of the differences in the system, um, uh, the system settings last week where they have beautiful new icons. They rearranged a few different things, put in a few things that I don't know what exactly they're doing. Interesting toggle buttons, you know. You can have a look at that video in question. They did increase um, usability in Teams. We could swap between business and personal accounts without closing the application. And then, of course, we have the brand new Copilot AI features that I wish would just go away. But, you know, 
we can only uh, only dream. We already talked about the pseudo command. We'll uh, skip that section here for now. So we have a number of security rollouts. So this actually is a good thing. Now, this is something that is not as impactful in a system like Linux, but where Windows is trying to migrate itself more and more into a like Android type system where the applications themselves can access various elements of the system a lot easier. Uh, basically containerized things. Of course in the immutable Linux distribution world we might start seeing some of these elements themselves. But in this case here if you are connected to Wi-Fi we have to remember that Wi-Fi gives a tremendous amount of location data to us. A, a device uses more than GPS to figure your location. Location. Your location on your device can be determined by the GPS, it can be determined by Wi-Fi connections, and it can be determined by Bluetooth. This is why you should keep Wi-Fi and Bluetooth disabled on a system when you are not actively using it. Turn it on, turn it off. I love the feature on Graphene OS that it will automatically turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth if I'm not actively connected to a system using it after 30 minutes and you can set how what that time frame is but because bluetooth should not be on on your device unless it's actively being used i've had a habit of using my bluetooth headset shutting you know ending the call but i'm driving so i never turn off bluetooth and i forget that it's on for days on end and fortunately i don't carry my phone around a lot but if i did various bluetooth sensors would be able to connect to my phone and grab some data off of my device so what Windows is doing now to deal with this is there's a new private privacy option giving specific Wi-Fi access to specific applications, which decreases the ability of an application from... Um, uh, from accessing the geolocation data inside Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi itself, but geolocation data inside of Wi-Fi, which helps keep applications that might have added uh, advertising uh, identifiers built into it. It prevents those from having access to location data of your device. So this is actually a really good security and privacy rollout uh, for this particular layout. So you can allow the Windows apps to see things based on GPS or Wi-Fi or not. You can disable that on a more fine-tuned which is good so if there's some apps that you would trust more you can allow those to have access if you have apps you're not quite sure about but you still got to use it you probably need to just simply disable that all right so of course if you uh there's just information about how you can get it hopefully you know how to do that now the biggest change we're seeing in recall and this was a controversial one we did a video of this a couple weeks ago so this reverses the information in that video they after apparently a lot of backlash Recall can now be uninstalled entirely. That is a feature, if you remember from a video we did a few weeks back, somebody had spotted the ability to uh, to see the um, uh, see a, uh, uninstall option for recall inside of the turn on or off Windows features. Windows came back and said that is a bug. And I guess subsequently removed it. I didn't see anything about that. But according to this new article here from uh, last week, Microsoft has released a major security and privacy update to its recall feature, initially delayed from June. Its first Copilot Plus PCs recall is now an opt-in feature. Now, that is something that uh, was changed back in June after the major controversy recall happened. They went from it being enabled that you had to disable explicitly from being installed but disabled and you had to enable it explicitly of course we did talk about they greatly improved the security by tying it to windows hello and the tpm module meaning that in order to access any of the data in recall you have to re-verify yourself these are all good things that it did but what I still said is if there's this massive program on the system that has the ability to collect all this data, I don't want to rely on a simple software toggle switch to turn it on or off. There's too much at risk of this. And so some people were excited to see a, a uh, remove function inside of the um, uh, install Windows features. They said that was a bug, but as of right now, allegedly there is ability to completely uninstall the application. 
including all associated AI models. For me, this is a really huge positive. So not a lot of negative hate for Windows in this uh, in this particular video. Uh, hopefully that's some of the balance to the channel. Am I about to run on back to Windows? Hell no. It still does basic levels of diagnostics, perpetually connecting to the internet, still giving me random pop-ups, asking me to subscribe to their services, constantly upselling nonsense. It is not a platform I'm interested in using using any way, shape, or form. However, they are moving in very, very positive directions with this particular update. So that is pretty good. They say the updates also enables users to filter out specific apps and updates, ensuring sensitive content like passwords and credit card information are excluded. Users can selectively delete data from selected times and apps or websites or removing everything at once. It will only be installable on the Copilot PCs. They say they are enforcing the hardware requirements such as BitLocker, uh, VBS, and kernel DMA protections. So the updated versions are rolling out, of course, as of now. So hopefully this will take care of a lot of the major issues and giving this software package only to people who explicitly wanting want it allowing people to uninstall it if they do not so there are windows updates for the week uh, of course in this one as we said this one a lot of positive things in this of course it is still windows and that does still mean that i personally am not interested in using it i recognize that there are some people that cannot get away from it i still recommend in those circumstances if you cannot get away from it for professional reasons that you can have a separate computer running linux for your personal stuff or if you can't afford that you can just pick up an extra external hard drive I and mean, i have some right here you can pick up these little external hard drives they're under a hundred dollars now you can literally install a full operating system of linux on this drive here and you can set your computer up there you plug this guy in and power your computer on you're running everything off of linux you simply unplug this drive put it back in your drawer down here push the power button again, it boots right back into Windows. Uh, very simple, as easy as that. And so that's really what I'd recommend for all your personal stuff. You want to keep your life as far away from Windows as you can as far as the personal stuff because it truly does collect and analyze a bunch more data about you than you think. And the more time that you're not handing over data to that system, the better off you're going to be down the long run. Of course, we do have a number of different videos on trying out Linux. I'll go ahead and close us out here with a video on the screen about how you can switch to Linux utilizing an external hard drive like that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more. Leave us a like and a comment down below, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.